The Bank of England today left rates on hold, but it pushed back very strongly on the idea that we are going to be seeing rate cuts anytime soon. Despite that, the market continues to push the idea of rate cuts. Sorry, got that one the wrong way around. And I spoke to the governor of the Bank of England about this. I wondered whether or not ultimately the market's getting the wrong message. Take a listen. Well, the message we're giving is that we have, you know, our, our job is to get inflation down to the 2% target. Now, we've made a lot of progress this year, and I believe we'll make more progress in the rest of this year, but we've still got a long way to go. So, you know, our very clear message is we think the policy is having a restrictive effect at the moment. But I'm afraid we're going to have to maintain this stance for what we describe as an extended period of time. Yeah. What, is, what is an extended period of time? Is that a year? Is well, that six months? How, how do you, we don't like, what, know how do you, so how do you what, make that language work? What, what I described, you know, and we described in the report, is, is really two, we took two approaches. One is to take the market curve, yep. as it was you know, a week or so ago. And that delivers inflation coming back to target, you know, broadly on the sort of two-year horizon. Uh, we also took, the, took a constant rate path, just maintaining it throughout the next yep. three years at, um, at the current rate. Brings it back a little bit quicker, but there's not much between them. So the, the key point here is, yeah, we're going to have to maintain this stance to be yeah. absolutely assured that inflation is coming back to 2%. The point in there is, though, that the market forecast, which does have cuts priced into it, albeit it was a week ago and there was only one of them, yeah. it does have a cut price in. And that mm. gets you to a situation where you've got inflation basically back down to targets within two years. It significantly reduces the risk of a recession. Isn't that, therefore, the most probable outcome when it comes to the interest rate path, i.e. at least pricing in one well, cut during that horizon? Actually, no, neither of those two um, paths had a recession in them. What, what they both have is very subdued growth. That's it. Because at, at, at the point when we did this... But a reduced risk of a recession. Well, I mean, they, they are slightly reduced. There was only about 25 basis points difference between the two paths if you average it out over three years. So there's not much between these paths. And, and that supports the yep. story that we're saying, which is, look, we're going to have to maintain this stance yeah, yep. for an extended period to why, ensure why we get to 2%. Why have you felt, though, today that you've needed to reiterate that so strongly? The language is, is, a, is a little bit more hawkish. Well, I think for two reasons. One is because we still see the risks to inflation as being on the upside at the okay. moment. And it's important not to, for that message not to get lost. Yeah, and there are several reasons why we think the risks are on the upside, but they are still on the upside. Secondly, if you don't mind me saying so, because everybody's started to ask the question about cuts. <laughs> so in a way, I think I have to, and we have to sort of lean against that and say, no, you know, we've got to maintain restrictive policy. Okay. Let's come back to that. Everybody started to talk about cuts. The market has priced it, started to price yeah. cuts. You're saying you do need to therefore lean in on that. Well, I'm not leaning against the curve that we used the other, the, you know, when we did yeah. the forecast, because frankly, there, was, you know, there wasn't a lot of difference between those two views of the, the constant throughout and the market then. But any more than that? Would you want to lean in on that? The well, what I'm going to say is this. If, if the market has taken from what we have published today a view that we are leaning towards more cuts, then I'm afraid I will lean against that. Yes. In terms of the other message that you may be giving today, and that may be a, a broader message, inflation expectations have probably come, become more de-anchored here than maybe elsewhere. Is there therefore a reason, a need to reiterate that restrictive policy will be with us for longer in order to make sure that you do, that policy does re-anchor policy back to where you would like it to be. Do you need to make that message crystal clear at this point? I, I don't think that inflation expectations have become more de-anchored here, actually. I think we all, all major central banks have had pretty similar experiences. And I think we're all having to give you know, variants of these messages because, frankly, yes, we've got to see uh, inflation come down. And, and there is a, you know, there, you're right in highlighting that there's an important link, obviously, between today's inflation, the expectations that people form, and therefore what inflation is going to be in the future. So it's an important... Is the, is the pain worth the gain? Is that another... But, but do you need to reiterate that side of things as well, that yes, we're going to have restricted policy, we are going to re-anchor policy, but it's going to be worth it. Well, I do, yeah, I do strongly believe that because I, I do say often, and, and it's important to say it, that of course if we continue in a situation where inflation is, is above target, then that's going to be a worse outcome. Do you think we are heading for an environment where rates are 
are higher for longer. Let's talk a little bit about the curve. I know you don't want to lean mm. on the curve, but let's talk about the curve. The curve, over the, certainly since the last meeting, has steepened significantly at the long end. Got a bear steepening. Long end rates have come up, mm. curves flat as a pancake. Why do you think that is, firstly? Jay Powell's talked about term premium. There's deficit pricing going in there. You talked in the introduction about maybe a higher R-star neutral rate. It could be stickier inflation. I, firstly, why do you think that has happened? What message is, is the long end of the curve sending? I think, I think there's one or two things that we're picking up from there. I do think that the higher for longer message has you know, been absorbed over this period that you're describing. So you go back to the summer, I think it's a fair, yep. a fair, a fair point to sort of start. I do think that the market has absorbed this from, from central banks in the plural, has, has absorbed this message uh, and it's got reflective in curves. I think there's a term premium element as well, as you rightly say. What I would say there is that there is a, there is a very large, what I would call sort of global element to that. Sure. Um, and in, in, interestingly, I think if you look at the UK and the Euro area together in yep. terms of, of, of curve movements, pretty similar yep. sorts of numbers. US, though, quite a lot bigger. Yep. It oh. is, so there is a bit of term premium in there. Mm. Is there a danger that the, the US curve steepens up, stays elevated, and we end up importing tighter monetary conditions, tighter financial conditions as a result of that, when actually the economy may not need that? There's a sort of gravitational effect between treasuries, gilts, bunts, and we may end up, because of that story, being too tight here? Well, we always, of course, have to factor that into our policy setting and we have to factor that into our forecast. And we will do that, obviously. That's, that's why we, yeah, we importantly condition on a market curve because it gives us an ability to, to do just that. So if we get more of that, I mean, we will obviously, you know, obviously do that and you know, adjust our sort of, you know, yep. adjust our judgment accordingly. Final question, would there be a way of leaning in on that? Could you adjust twist QT, for instance, to kind of alter the shape of the curve, maybe to deal with that imported financial well, condition? we've taken quite a, a strong position that we're not running QT to move the curve around, yep. um, that we're running it in, a, in what I call a neutral fashion in that sense. And I, it, would, um, it would frankly take a lot to move me from that position. I think on the whole, I think that's, you know, <laughs> As well as my, my mother used to say, it'd be a bit clever, too clever by half. Yep. Um, so I don't envisage us doing that now.